taking position for a brighter future. Taking position for a brighter future. And we took our text from 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1 to 16. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1 to 16. We may not be able to read the whole of that portion of scripture because our first service is very short and we don't have all the time. But I would like to encourage you to read that scripture. It's a popular scripture, 1 Kings chapter 17, from verse 1 to 16. Say, I'm taking position for a brighter future. In that scripture, there was famine in the land. There was economic hardship. And God began to speak to his prophet, Elisha. He said, leave where you are to the brook. I told us last week, he said, there I'll feed you, in the, I'll feed you twice. I'll feed you through the raven. He was there, raven was bringing food to him. He feeds in the morning, in the evening. Then the brook got dry. He was drinking water from the brook and the group, brook dried up. And God instructed him, now go to Zarephath. I've commanded a widow. Now, he used the word, I have commanded a raven. He said, I've commanded a widow. Now, the first, the two different people God used to feed the prophet were not likely people. They were not people that you will expect that God should feed anybody with. A widow is a, a poor widow who doesn't have much. But God used her to feed the prophet. God sometimes will use unlikely sources to bless you. So don't try to judge with your five senses or with your experience or with your exposure where your next provision will come from. Don't always think it will come from places you are familiar with. It will sometimes come from places you are not familiar with. A widow is broke. How can you feed a prophet through a widow? A raven is a bed, and that bed is very stingy. That bed fights over food with his children. I like you to go and you can watch a documentary on raven. When he brings food, she, when a raven bed brings food home, he doesn't share it with his own children. How much more you now carry food and give a raven to go and give a prophet? He will finish it on the way. Is that not so? so God sometimes use unlikely sources, places you least expect. So, because if you always look up to places that you are familiar with, you'll be shortchanging yourself. You'll be, you'll be shortchanging yourself because those places might not be places where God will supply your needs. Are you following me? Are you following me? So you have to be ready, you have to be open-minded that God can, God can send an idol worshiper. I'm sure you know that. Huh? God can send an idol worshiper, somebody who does not know God, to be a source of blessing to you. Because some of you are only used to, you only expect that everything should come from church people, should come from people that you know, people that you see all the time. Sometimes it can come from a stranger, somebody you don't know. One of my friends was, they were building their church uh, during, during uh, COVID, during lockdown. They started the church building before lockdown. So, so they were struggling to build this church. They were struggling as a church to build this church. But during lockdown, uh, in the estate where they were building that church, a man who has never been to their church before saw the project and copied the number of a church and called the church and told them that how far with the project, blah, blah, blah. They thought he was joking. And he single-handedly finished a multi-million ch uh, building church during lockdown. He wasn't a member. He just keep passing and he saw it. Are you following me? Are you following me? And Elijah sold the land to a church for a proper. I don't want to mention, it's a church you know. One of the biggest churches in this country. Their first property in Lagos belongs to an Elijah. He sold it to them. They paid the money. He needed the money urgently. After he has finished using the money for the business he wanted and the money came back, he returned their money to them. So God is teaching us from this scripture that when you are positioning yourself, you have to make sure that your expectation is flexible. Your expectation must not be rigid. Every time help will not always come from your uncle and your auntie. Sometimes help will come from people that doesn't even know you. Because it is God that is at work. Huh? Because it is God that is at work, it may not always come 
through likely sources. Are you following what I'm saying? This is very important to note so that you don't shortchange and lock yourself and shut doors against yourself because your expectation is from your, 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 your old boys association, old students association. No, sometimes God used, so God told Elisha, he said, go to that place. Now, last week I told us, the way the world is at the moment, it's very obvious that we, have come, we are coming gradually to the end of this world. I, should, I know we don't like to hear things like this. It's obvious that this world is gradually winding up. Scientists confirm that this world is tired. Scientists confirm that this world has been overused. That's why we have all the problem we have with weather. That's why strange things are happening. Maybe you don't know that this world is going to come to an end one day. Scientists have agreed that one day human beings will no longer be found on the surface of the earth. Even scientists have agreed. Because it will be in a, it will be uh, huh? it won't be inhabitable. Not it, it, will, it will not be inhabitable again. It will not be just like nobody can stay in Jupiter. You know, you know there are more planets than this world. I'm sure you know. There are more places. But those places, human beings cannot survive in, some of the, in all those places. The environment is not conducive for anybody to stay there and survive. The scientists are now looking for, are there other planets where people can survive? So that before this place we run out, they can carry us, I'll show, although we're going to pay. <laughs> you see, human beings, they, have, they don't know that it's rapture that is going to take people out of this place. But they are looking for how, you know, praise God. So one day this world will come to an end. And that's why the Bible is not surprised. It's obvious, it has been said that there will be War, there'll be, I mean, there'll be all kinds of things, trouble work, and that's what is going on everywhere. I was surprised last week to read that America is warning China not to invade Taiwan. You know, Russia just invaded Ukraine, and there's war. So China too wants to take advantage of that and invade. Ta they've always been one, they've always been telling Taiwan that that land is their land. So they wanted to invade Taiwan. So America is saying if they invade Taiwan, they are going to face military attack. This is third world war already. I know you don't like hearing things like this, but that is the truth. And I am, I have the obligation, the responsibility to tell you the truth, whether you like it or you don't like it. My job is a little difficult. I wish everything I'm telling you is, are the things you like. But the truth is that if I'm going to do my job, I have to tell you what you don't like. That this world is going to wind up soon. I don't know how soon. I don't know if it's 100 years. I don't know if it's 10 years. I don't know if it's 10 months. But I know it's soon. Now, but let me tell you this. Despite the fact that the world is coming gradually to an end, this is the best season for God's people. This season is what? It's our best season. Because darkness will cover the earth. And gross darkness will cover the people. But the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon thee. Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3. He said, kings shall come to the brightness of your light. Praise God. So what I was, are we supposed to do when there is famine over there, famine over there, people are running out of Africa to develop countries. It's not only Nigeria. Most African countries are, people are running away to places where life is much better, where there is security. But the real truth is that there is really no security anywhere than in God. That's the real truth. Because even where there are securities, a stupid boy entered school last week and shot 20 people. So in the real sense, if we really want, security is just more in some places than some places. There is nowhere where you have 100% security. I'm sure you agree with me. So what do I do? If I'm living in such a time like this, when things are difficult, when financial, when governments are trying all efforts to make life easy for their citizen, and yet life is not easy. When 
there is increase in price everywhere. What do I do? God spoke to me and asked me to preach this message to you that you need to take position. Everybody say, I'm taking position for a brighter future. Say it boldly, I'm taking position. Let's read Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. If you've seen it, say praise the Lord. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart. Can we have it on KJV, the whole King James? I really want us to have it. Isaiah, I'm sorry, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. Okay. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the what? Tower. That's something high building. And will watch to see what he will say to me. And what I shall answer when I am approved. Verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, write what? The vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that reads that readeth it. Verse 3. For the vision is yet for what? An appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come, it will not tarry. The verse 1 says, the prophet said, I will stand upon my tower and watch to see what he will say to me. That means I will position myself in such a way that I can see what God will say to me. Though we're supposed to, we naturally we only hear what is being said. But there is a dimension where you see what is being said. The, past, the, the prophet said, I will climb the tower. Now, in the, in the Bible days, prophets are used to climbing this tower to wait on God. It's a common thing for a prophet to leave this ground and climb a tower. To seek the face of God. So that they can see what God will say to them. Prophets see themselves as people that God has called to watch over the people. Watch over the comfort, the welfare of the people. So most of us, sometimes, a prophet that is called of God will leave where people are. Leave all the distractions and get to a place where he can see what God will say to him. And I want to say to you that if the prophet in the Bible is have to leave the ground level to a particular position so he can see what God will say, then you and I, if we are going to hear God consigning our life, we cannot remain where everybody is to hear God. We have to come to a level where we can hear God. Now, which level can you hear God? When you leave the place of distraction, and when I say the place of distraction, it doesn't necessarily be a physical distraction. Your senses are distractions. I'm sure you know. Our five senses, they are distractions. Your, 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 the world is full of distractions. The world is giving, entertainment is a distraction. There is nothing wrong with entertainment, but obsession for entertainment is distraction. Are you following me? So the prophet, for the prophet to hear God, he will leave that ground, that place of distraction, and come to that place in, his, in the state of his mind where he can hear God. You too need to, once in a while, leave all the distractions in your life. Your problems can be your distraction. Your senses can be your distraction. You need to learn to leave the place where you know you are easily distracted and come to that consciousness where you can hear God. I say, I need to hear God. In a time like this, it is important that you know how to hear God for yourself and stop waiting for people to tell you, thus saith the Lord. It is important that you grow to that point where you too can say, Thus saith the Lord. How well positioned you are will determine how well you will see. Now, now that I climb this altar, I see this congregation clearer. If I come to your level, I can't see it as clear as I see it from here. Are you getting me? So, the higher I can go, the better I can see. Did you get this? If I stay on the same level you are, stand there, I may not see everything like I'm seeing it right now. But because I've, I'm staying on an elevated space, now I see clearer. If you are going to hear God clearer concerning your life, you are going to come out of distractions. You're going to come into a place where you can hear God. And listen to me, it's important that you hear God concerning your life. It's important that God speaks to you about your life. It's important that you stop 
waiting for a prophet to tell you what God is saying, but you are able to climb the tower and watch to see what God will say.